Okay. Okay. Here we go. All right. So, so again, um, this scenario assumes that we did not receive the WIA grant. Up top is the uh, the the principal borrowing, one point nine million. To make things easier, what we put in here is an interest rate of one percent. Now, the borrowing may occur in 2023. So obviously we don't know what the interest rate would be, but for just to keep it simple, so that you can see what a 1% rate uh, does, uh, that's why we, we put that, that in. We can alter that to, to show you a, a different scenario, just so you can see the, the impact of, an, of, a, of a different rate and 40 years. Each year has amortization uh, of, of a fixed rate, principal uh, paying down, an interest rate of 1% for the year. Total debt service is in this column. We've summed up the 40 year total of 2.3 million. So that includes 1.9 of principal, almost 400,000 of interest at 1%. And then we've taken a simple average. Again, this is to give you an idea. You know, our intention is not to be changing water rates every year for the 40 year period. So this is just to give you an idea of what, what the, a rate increase may, may uh, take place. So the 40 year average debt service is 58,000 and change. The consumption amount for 2021 was almost 13 million. When you divide the average annual payment by the 13 million consumption, the average rate increase per gallon is just about one half of 1% of one cent. When you value that one half of one cent for a thousand gallons, the cost would be $4.53 for each thousand gallons. We've done some, some work uh, with determining what may be the average usage for the single family home. And the average use came out to roughly 80,000 gallons. 80,000 gallons at a, at a rate of $4.53 per thousand gallons would be an annual cost of $362 uh, additional. A condominium seems to be averaging about 40,000 gallons a year. That would have a cost of $181 uh, per, per annum. Commercial seems to be showing 70,000 gallons a year, and that would be a cost of almost $317 additional per year in this scenario. So just to show you what the impact might be if we change it from 1% to 2%, the numbers change accordingly. So the total payments are now 2.7 million. Total interest is 795,000. That changes the average annual payment to 68,000. The consumption doesn't change, but the rate per gallon increases, rate per thousand gallon increases, and each of the totals uh, for the average usage would change. Again, this is just to, to, to give you uh, an idea of what the impact might, might be. Uh, so we'll go back to the 1%. And again, it changes back. So as, as I prefaced, obviously we don't know what the interest rate is going to be, um, but just to, to, to give you a simple picture, we just uh, chose a 1% impact. Um, so should I go to the, the other scenario? Well, for, first I'll ask, are there any questions in, in, on this scenario? Before we move to the next one, there's a hold on a second. There's a chat. Let me see what's going on here. 
Sorry, I have to, okay, it's old. And you can all hear us okay, right? Yep. Yeah. Okay. So no, no questions here, correct? No, we can hear you. Okay, so we're, we're, we're gonna go to the other one. Um, click on the Excel icon. And it's, it's, let's see. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. All right. So now in this scenario, we're assuming that we do get the WIA grant. We start off again with principal of 1.9 million. The first two years assumes that we borrowed the money. We're still doing the upgrades. So we haven't accumulated all of the costs for the first two years. This is a, an assumption of ours. And in the third year, the upgrade has taken place and we've received the WIA grant money, which reduces the principal. Leo, yes. did, you put, did you put the new one on the screen? I'm still, oh, I'm still, on, the, I'm still on the old one. Yeah, yeah, sorry, sorry. We, we have to share. Go, go to new share. Okay. Sorry about that. No Thanks, Bill. No um, that one, I think it's that one. And then share. Okay. Do you have that now? The new, the new screen? Yes. Yep. Yes. Thank you. So I'll, I'll just start off again. So what we're assuming is the same borrowing of 1.9 million, but we're assuming in year three that we've received the WIA grant because we've gone through all of the expenditures for the upgrade. We've gone through the process of submitting all of the documentation to receive the WIA grant. It, it would take rough, we're assuming, roughly two years to take care of that. And in the third year, we've received the WIA grant, which reduces the principal balance down from one point, uh, from, in this case, 1.891 to 678,000. In the first two years, the principal payment is based on a 40-year life at that principal balance. The interest payment is 1% at this principal balance, and the debt service are these numbers in this column. Once the WIA grant has been received and the principal balance decreases, the principal installments decrease, and the interest rates, of course, the payments on interest rate decrease. And so the debt service per year decreases almost to one third of what the original amount was. In the same process, the 40 year period, debt service is 946,000, which is 170,000 of interest and 775,000 of principal payments. 40%, which would be the WIA grant amount, 40% of the 19. Yeah, we really can't see too much of your screen, just a little bit. Oh, what? You can't see, oh, hold you on. You can just on. see the bottom. You just need to go back up to the top. Okay. Right? Yep, that's good. Better, thank you. Okay. But, but you wanted to go to the bottom. Yeah, but that's <laughs> okay. We're, we're, we're good. Okay. Oh dear, right. sorry. No problem. So instead of now an average uh, annual payment of roughly 60,000 over the 40 year period uh, with the WIA grant, the average annual payment is now roughly 24,000. We're assuming the same consumption in gallons, but you can see the drop in, in the, uh, the rate per gallon from almost uh, one half percent to just roughly two tenths of one, of one cent. A thousand gallons is a dollar eighty-three. Using the same assumptions of average consumption for a single-family home, the cost per year or the additional cost per year is uh, roughly one hundred and fifty thousand. Can you just scroll up so we can see the rate per gallon? I just can't see that on the screen right now. I heard you. I can't see it. Is it maximizing? Yeah, well, I can see it on the right side. Yeah, it's on there. Maybe it's your device. Yeah, it's, right. It's yeah. Compromising or something. Hold on a second. Let me let me just see something here. Hold on. Um, okay, that's fine. If it's just me, that's fine, guys. Sorry. Okay. 
There's a dollar so, eighty three on the right side there under N. Wait, so Phil, you're oh, you're perfect. seeing it, right? I can yeah. I can see it. Okay. I, see it. I see it now. Okay. All right. So then, assuming the same uh, usage that that we assumed in the first scenario, eighty thousand per year for a single family home, there would be an increase of roughly one hundred fifty thousand. For the condominium at, at the usage of 40000 there would be an increase of $73 per year. When, when you said $150,000, you meant the $150,000. $150,000, did I say $1,000? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, for the commercial, $128. So again, there's a lot of variables here, particularly the interest rate. Um, the I'll, I'll just throw this out. Again, as I said, because this is a, a, a borrowing for a water district, you're allowed a term of 40 years. That assumes that we will be issuing a ban for each of those years. And that could be an appropriate assumption. Um, if we were to bond it, which means that we would go to the marketplace to seek a fixed rate for a period of time, we may not be able to get a 40 year bond uh, because the you know, investors may not want to risk money for 40 years. Um, so you have to just take this into consideration. This is assuming a ban that gets repriced every year. The interest rate can change every year. Uh, so that's a, a big variable. Just to show what might take place if after the WIA grant, the interest rate increased from 1% to 2%. Okay. The average payment over that 40 year period would increase to roughly 27,000. And then the cost per 1,000 gallons would increase to $2.09 and the annual amounts for each of the segments increase accordingly. Um, Can I just ask a clarifying question? Sure. So just conceptually here, what we're saying is all of these costs for this work are going to be absorbed by the usage. So uh, the homeowners and business owners, we're not gonna see any change from this in the, in our uh, in our annual tax bill, so all of this is being covered by the the usage that we pay quarterly. That's correct, right? Yes. Again, the water district does not pay taxes. The water district expense is is based on usage and the rates associated with the usage. Right. All right. Okay. Right. Uh, it's. It, I just. I'm only clarifying that because I, I think a lot of at least my neighbors don't understand that um, but thank you for clarifying and so then are you saying if we go the ban route would we try to set the rate once no, um, or no. Would you... it, with if it's the ban route which is i'll i'll say this you know not not knowing what the future holds but because it's a 40-year deal and because um it can, it can have a life no longer than 40 years. And going the ban route is normally the route where you would achieve the lowest interest rate because each year the borrowing is for a one year period. And normally a short term borrowing like that would allow the lowest interest rates available at that time. Having said that, because each year you will be repricing this ban, meaning that you are going back into the marketplace after the first year to borrow the same amount of money to a new investor and the interest rate prevailing at that time may be different than what it was the prior year. So you are, by going the ban route, you, have, you are having a longer repayment period because you can 
do this for 40 years, you are probably going to have the lowest interest rate available for each of those years, again, because each year it's only a borrowing for one year. But you're introducing interest rate risk because you're not fixing the rate, you're only fixing it for the one year. But then when you go back to the marketplace the following year, you are putting yourself at risk to whatever the prevailing interest rate is at that point in time. So you're gonna, we're gonna have to reset the usage rates each year based on that. The interest rate. The interest rate of the, of the borrowing, not the usage rate. So, so, my, so let me be very clear. My question, my question, my question is: If we we're charging two cents a gallon this year, and then you do the next ban next year, and it's a different rate, do you have to change? Are you going to have to charge customers a different rate for the water the next year to account for more or less um, to account for the variation in the interest rate? That is an excellent question. I had, I had prefaced the conversation with, we do not intend to change the rates every year, which is why we were showing you what the average annual payment might be. Yes, however, if it starts to show that the rate that we've charged is not covering the additional expense going forward, then we would have to revisit changing the rate again. So you're gonna to try to make a best guess going into it. And if it doesn't quite turn out right, you, you have to make adjustments over time. Correct. That's fair. And, and if we don't go the ban route, we go the bond route and it's got a shorter duration, would you try to make that same estimate or does it imply that we'd need to that the you'd need to increase the, the water rate to cover the bond over the shorter duration. The latter, because we would have issued a bond for a fixed interest rate. We would know the debt service for each of those years. We can do a simple average annual payment cost again and come up with a fixed increase in the rate and go and go with that assumption. Again, because we would know what the debt service is for that period of time. And so we would know what the all in cost would be. But it would likely be substantially higher because it's gonna be a shorter very duration. Possibly. Yes, very possibly. However, it is conceivable that we can seek a long term, a 40 year bond it's conceivable that there is an investor base that would be willing to risk their money for 40 years with a fixed rate. However, in a, in a uh, positive sloping yield curve, which, which means that shorter term rates are lower than the longer term rates, right? So if you, if you borrow for 40 years, then initially, and for the life of the borrowing, you would be introducing a higher rate than what you may have been able to achieve using a ban. It doesn't well, help. consider, sorry, Jack, go ahead. But and I'll, then I'll stop asking questions. But if we can only do a 30 year bond versus a 40 year bond, right? Even if the interest rates are the same, the payment would be higher. Right. Correct, correct. Because you are now only splitting the payment into 30 year yeah. segments as opposed to 40 year segments. Correct. So to, to me that, I mean, just as we're trying to set expectations with our neighbors, um, that seems like potentially the bigger problem than the slight variations in the um, interest rate in the band. When, when will we know like that is that, um, that point ban versus bond? Well, first of all, we, we would need to know when we're going to borrow the money. Um, so the, the, the information that 
that we have is that it's not going to be required until sometime in 2023, correct? That, that's correct, right, yeah. By, by the time we, um, we, we go through the process with uh, the bidding process to, to get the final uh, bid specs put together, go out to bid, um, and, and go through that process will we'll be towards, and I have a schedule that I worked on with Delaware recently. Um, I think that puts us out like sometime in um, end of the year or so. Uh, so I think we would probably be in a position where we can, um, we, we, we can apply for the, uh, uh, the, the ban or, or bond and make that decision early next year, 2030. So I'll, let me throw this out to you, Jeff. With something of this magnitude and it, of its sensitivity, and since we have such an engaged committee, I don't think the folks here on this table uh, would be providing due diligence if they made the decision in a vacuum. So I, I would think at that point, we would get some options from our debt consultant. And before we pull the trigger, we'll get the committee involved and see what, what might be a consensus. Great, makes sense. That's, that's my yeah. presentation. <laughs> yeah, so we're, we're looking at, I just pulled up that high level schedule. So we're, we're looking for advertising for the bids around August timeframe, receive the bids in October, award the bid in November, Sign construction contracts December. Construction starts March 2023. So I think that would be a point where we would want to then make a decision on okay ban yeah. versus bond. Yeah, that, that's a that's a good uh, time frame to uh, to circle count. Right, but yeah. uh, you know what? I, what what I said, Jeff, is 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 what I I had meant. Um, I, I think getting the feel from the from the committee is the utmost importance to this group at the table here. And so uh, come, come that time, we'll have interest rates known um, or, or better estimates known, I should say. And what the costs of a, of a ban, what the costs of a available bond term might be. And then, and then we can make, make the decision that uh, that, that, that we may feel comfortable with. Uh, excuse my na naivete, what is a considerably higher rate? What, what is the, a considerably higher rate? What could that be? I know this is speculation, but just curious. It, well, it is speculation. So uh, an, an answer that I give you uh, could be thoroughly misleading. I'll tell you this though, there were bands that were priced today, not, not for the town of Lewisboro, um, but for uh, other municipalities that were in the 1% range. The, the way the, the competitive pricing uh, process goes is the borrowing entity submits the transaction to the marketplace, and they then receive bids from investors that are interested. The lowest bid, meaning the lowest interest rate that somebody is willing to uh, receive, wins. So the folks today that, that I was aware of, a winning bid was just about 1%. However, the next closest bid was two and a half percent. And the closest bid to that was three and a half percent. So you can see that in, in one marketing of one transaction for a one year ban, you got a bid of 1% and then you got a bid of two and a half and a bid of three and a quarter. So I don't know if that can answer your question, but it just shows what the volatility could be in a particular day and what the appetite could be for the available investors. So you had one hungry investor that was willing to, to earn a, a, a 1%, and then you had a couple of others 
who weren't so willing to take the transaction. So they, they put a higher price on it. So I, I, Thank couldn't, you. I couldn't possibly tell you what the rates could be a year from now. Of course, thank you. Just one, just based on this timeline, when, when is the, would the first rate increase be felt by, um, you know, by a, a homeowner, condominium owner? I'm not quite okay. sure I understand that. So, so when would we? Yeah, yeah. I, I think, I think, we're, yeah. Jeff, um, um, Jeff Holbrook is saying is that we, when we, when we do the bond issuance, we're bad. Um, at what point do we start charging? Uh, I would, I, I would think the that it would be at the at the issuance time. Okay. So, like mid, middle of twenty three, you're saying? Yeah, I would, I would say that. Okay. So March, yeah, March, April time frame, 24, 23, yeah. How long after you, um, the, the bond is issued, is it, I guess I should say, you, you go through the, to the market, right? Right. How long does it take after that to, um, let's say about a, about a is month. Is it about a month? To, it's about a month. Okay. Once, once you get the documentation in the right. marketplace. Yeah. Let's yeah. yeah. so say about show up in July. First. Well, right. Okay. So what, what Joel had said was, let, let, let's assume we issue in, in March or April, you would see the rate increase that following July billing. Right. For the second quarter, which is billing July. Because, because it's quarterly. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. What factors influence our ability, besides ones that we can't control, to get, um, to get, a, to get such a bond? As a town. What factors? Well, first of all, the, the, it depends on the, uh, the borrowing environment. So I was pretty surprised to hear that somebody was able to get a 1% ban considering the volatility and the tumult going on uh, in, in the uh, uh, Ukraine invasion, right? So I, at the time that they priced, uh, the markets uh, kind of calmed down. But again, you could see that uh, there was a, a, a big spread between bids, right? So it's, it's the marketplace environment, one. Two, it's the credit quality of the, in, of the borrower. And right now, we have pretty good credit quality. Uh, we're, we're AA stable, according to S&P. So that, that holds sway in the, in the marketplace. We have a pretty good investor base. Um, we, we pretty much get five to eight bidders every time we go to the marketplace. And that's, that's a pretty sizable uh, group. And um, I'm not sure if there's much more I could add to that. Okay, I'm not trying to be hyperbolic or try to cause a stir, but a serious question here. If our if our water plant was to fail, would that affect our town's credit rating? No, only if the uh, general fund could not cover the expenditure. Thank you. Everybody, it's Andrea Rendo. Um, so at the end of the day, in order to complete this particular project, um, not taking into consideration anything else that may have to be done in the future, but this particular project, we need to borrow by ban or by bond $1.9 million approximately. Correct. And we have to do that regardless of whether or not the WIA grant comes through, correct? That's correct. correct. All right. And right now, I know, Tony, do you still have a great deal of confidence that we're getting that WIA grant based on the feedback that you're receiving, right? 
That's correct. Based on the feedback in the last discussion I had two, three, three weeks ago with uh, the EVP of New York State Environmental right. Facilities Corp. Yes. Right. But but even taking all that into consideration, and the fact that I'm sure all of us have been disappointed many times in the past and other aspects of our life, let's say for argument's sake, they don't come through. I think that you know we also have to be prepared for the fact that this expense may be one that the water district participants are going to bear for a long time. And it, it, it doesn't, not that it doesn't matter, but it's, it's part of this reality. We need to borrow this 1.9. That's how much it's gonna to cost to, to make this fix that we need to make. And, you know, and there's no putting it off, right? That's that's correct. Okay. Yeah, the the one point nine is the budget that they've that's given you to date. Right. So you're going to have people bidding on this, and while construction is difficult right now, you know, so that one point nine is not is certainly not just a given. Right. Either way. I mean, what, what, say, say it again, Phil. We just said the, the one point nine is a, is a budgeted number from the engineers on what right. this is going to cost. Mm -hmm. So that that number is not a, not certainly not a given. Construction right. costs have gone up significantly. You know, I'm building over there, and and it's difficult. But at the same time, it's still a budget, so mm -hmm. that number can can change and will change. Correct. Correct. Hopefully, to the, hopefully for the positive. Right. That's the hope. But Tony, also, I just want to bring up, and I know I keep uh, belaboring this point, we haven't discussed the sewer end of things and the RBCs, which was one of my questions right. about that, their imminent failure and, and what would happen if we needed to, we know they're old and the technology is old, um, and how much that would cost and how that disproportionately affects Conant Valley. So I just want to keep that in mind because it's separate and it's different and, and it could be a significant amount as well. C correct that that could be and you know but we are going to of course do our best to try to get some funding that's being put out there uh, and being made available uh, for wastewater projects so we're, we're on the lookout for those especially coming out of the uh, the infrastructure package from, from the federal government Which when are our rbcs at end of life i don't know that answer i don't know I, no I think that. that's a, I think that's really important, Tony. I think yeah. that since the technology is yeah. is old and and we would have to replace it with new technology, I think that's a critically important question. Right. Yeah. So I, I know one of them uh, was close to failing for Long Joel when we took over the plant, and it was repaired back then. So it's so you got one that was that's still original and one that has a replaced axle. I think it was. So yeah, but most of it is original. Yeah, I'd like to see some numbers worked up on how that's going to affect us as well, because I, I don't think we can think about one without thinking about the other. Um, right. Even though they're they're built differently, I think it's important for us to understand the financial impact in totality. And you're right, um, Erica. We certainly need to go through that exercise. I think, Erica, you're absolutely right. But we know we have to do this, and you know, to to continue to work on this and to get that grant. And and I'm not saying don't do the other. The other is is extremely important. Right. But e either way, this has to be done. Agreed. Yeah. Tony, Tony, and I are going to be looking at some other options as well, um, and inquiring and asking a lot of questions. Um, so, you know, hopefully there'll be other options that can play in and help alleviate some of this expense, um, but we'll see. Thank you. Yeah, so hopefully we'll find out about the WEA grant. Um, I, I heard that, um, that there was a meeting held on February 10th. Actually, I heard this through Delaware Engineering, um, 
where they were reviewing and making decisions on applications, but we have not heard anything. Um, and, but we'll, uh, I'm gonna place a couple of calls, uh, gonna wait till next week. And, um, you know, we'll, we'll see if we'll, we'll get some good news on this. And then of course, we're still looking at the federal funding that I had originally applied for that's going through the, uh, uh, the continuing resolution process and appropriations in Washington. Um, so that was uh, mid-February also was the next round of discussions and I'm waiting for, for feedback from that as well. Uh, quick question. Um, the the yeah, 1.9 $1 million that we're talking about, I, I mean, I'm sure I have it, but there, there's a budget somewhere of the 1.9? There is. If, if you go on our website, there's the, the actual plan that was submitted to the Department of Health and also to submitted as part of the WE application. And the budget's in there? Yeah, yes, it is. It's, um, it, it's under the, uh, sorry, wrong mouse. It, it's, it's under the, uh, the community link uh, on, on our website, and there's an Oak Ridge page. Um, I, think it's, I mean, it's important to take a hard look at that because that that certainly will factor into where we are with this. Right, right. Yeah, let's see here. Okay. Yeah, Phil, I haven't taken a critical look at that to see how, you know, and I'm not experienced or, or no, know I, I enough get, about it. If, if I get it, I'll, I'll be happy to work with my That my would be great, Phil. We would to, really appreciate yeah, that. Yeah, no, I mean, we talk about it like it's a given, but it certainly isn't. Thanks. That would that would go a long way. Appreciate it. Yeah, no, appreciate it. I'm I'm in this with you. <laughs> but, I mean, like you said, I have as much biggest interest in this whole thing. You sure do. You sure do. So we all, you know, we're all counting. Yeah, we all work together each to other. get it done. And listen, I appreciate you guys doing this. I mean, this we're thank you. Yeah, and we're, we're not giving up. I mean, we're 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 certainly going to look for more. Um, more dollars from other, you know, whether it's the federal or the state. I mean, it's uh, it's something that I'm not giving up on. So ideally, if we can get even more than what the WEA grant is covering, you know, if we can get the other 40% covered through any other sort of uh, grant funding, that'll be um, um, that'd be very very good for us. So. Yeah, look, and to the district. It's the first. Course. It's the first time we're really hearing about grants at this plant. So. Thank you. You're welcome. Yes. And Tony, you know I have a lot of faith in your charms and how they're <laughs> going to work over at the EFC and all of these other folks who can give us money. So. Well, you know what? I, I, I have like to that give, charm. That I, works, huh? Charm does every once in a while, but I, I have to give credit to Chris Burdick. I was talking to him about he's our assemblyman, as you all probably know. Yes. And, and we were talking about. Um, Specific to the, the the lake studies that we we just wrapped up and and you know what's next the, the, those are the studies regarding the phosphorus buildup in our lakes and, and how to mitigate that and, and, and it's going to require work on the wastewater treatment side whether it's individual septics whether it's a, a water treatment plant or a community septic and so. I was Chris and I were, were talking about it. He that's when he introduced me to the EVP of um, of EFC, New York State EFC. We had actually, in fact, Chris and, and Peter Harcum had sent letters of support to the CEO of EFC uh, for this project for Oak Ridge. Uh, but when we were talking about the lake projects and the forthcoming work related to 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 the wastewater treatment uh, uh, that that's potentially would impact the, the lakes. We, um, we that Chris arranged the call with the EVP of VFC. Uh, of so we, we talked about the lakes. Um, he's a good connection to have. And, and then I brought up Oak Ridge and the fact that we had already submitted the WE application. And, and so, so it's on his radar um, and, and he knows it's PFAS. And if it's PFAS and if we continue to have or exceed the New York State MCLs, um, he feels that, you know, he was 99% sure that we should get this. Um, but it is on his radar. So um, so we, we have the right contacts and we'll hopefully continue to, to leverage them. What about income surveys? 
Yeah, so that's something that uh, Andrew and I have discussed. So we're we're gonna work on that as well. Um, you know, we have to keep. What's our time process. frame? Sure. Yes. What's our time so, frame on that? So, so for CVBG grants, the time frame for that would be. Um, let me think about this. We would have to apply the the application deadline is I think June twenty twenty three, because it's a, it's a three year cycle. Um, so we would have to do a uh, an income survey within a year before that. So figure. Um, let me let me just think about that. So so the funding the current funding is is uh, uh, was twenty it was it's a three year funding window for CDBG grants the like community development block grants. Um, it's twenty twenty two to twenty twenty five. The deadline was 2021, so at three. So I'm sorry, 2024 is the deadline for that. So 2023 is when we really need to start working on um, on the income survey for CDBG type grants. But I don't and think we, we, gonna... should, we should rely I'm sorry. on those alone. I think there's other options we need to pursue sooner, right? I mean, I think there's going to be other wastewater grant opportunities that we can go after. And what we need to find out is all this federal money that's being pumped into wastewater projects, when is it going to be available to us? Because it's going to be funneled through the state. And, and chances are it's going to come through New York State EFC. So that's what we need to stay on top of and, 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 and pursue those. Um, when they're, when I understand. They're I'm just worried if that doesn't come through, a community block grant, is a, it could be a viable option for us. We really just don't know what the the income is of, of the Oak Ridge, uh, you know, of Oak Ridge and along with Conan Valley. So I think it's a really important piece of data that we need to get at. We can't right. get at it in any other way. Um, I'm right. happy to volunteer my time. Um, if there's okay. something I can do to be helpful. I don't know if we're going to hire a consultant or someone to, to engage someone to do that, but happy to be helpful in any way I can. Okay, that, that's appreciated, Erica. So we'll, yeah, we'll certainly have further discussions on that. And, and like I said, any other grant opportunities that, uh, that we're made aware of. If I could just make one, I'd be remiss if I didn't say that the most common thing I hear from my neighbors is around the sort of ongoing development and expansion, um, you know, and, and the impact that that's gonna have on this, you know, the system that's not working very well. So I, I there's nothing to discuss, but just the, the point of view from, the homeowners over here is that uh, you know we continue to develop and put strain on the system, and you know it seems like an endless increase in costs coming based on all the work that needs to be done. Well, yeah, but I mean, right now, fingers crossed that the plan seems to be working as it should, right? So now the major project is this one, and right, it's the PFAS mitigation and putting in the those gag filters, will, which will, of course, you know, not, not only eliminate PFAS, but it will improve, you know, the water clarity or, or taste, because uh, that's what carbon does. Um, no, I mean, that's great, but, you know, we're paying seven or $8,000 a year for the water in the sewer over here. And if we're gonna add a couple hundred dollars to this and then whatever the sewer is gonna be, just, just making the point that, you know, yeah. that, that's all I hear over here is why, why, you know, why does the town board, why does the planning board continue to approve these things? So just right. making the point for you to hear. And, okay. and to piggyback on Jeff's comment, our, we only get money because our water keeps failing and <laughs> keeps having issues. That's unfortunate. Yeah, and, and unfortunately it goes back to the source, right? The water source and, and you know, you're, you're, you're trying to um, obviously improve what's coming out of the ground. And yeah, if, if we could tap into a different source um, that would need all this filtration and treatment, that would be ideal. But we, we right now, we don't have that option. I mean, I think, I think the problem is, is split into it to different parts. I, I think the part is the, the water from the ground getting to the water treatment plant and how clean can we make it, right? That's one issue. Then once the water's clean, because I visited the plant and I know Tony, you've been there many times, when the water leaves the plant and enters into the infrastructure that delivers it to the various households, 
we have other issues that you've been trying to address with the flushing systems and all of that. You know, we've got basically an antiquated or an insufficient infrastructure system that gets it from the clean water from the plant to the house. And then we've got the additional problem when, when people start complaining of lead in the water from when it enters the units to, to the buildings to the faucet, right? So we've got three parts. Sorry, that's my brother's dog. I apologize. Hold on. Sorry about that. Um, so it, we've got we've got separate issues, and each one of the issues is, you know, one of it's the homeowners association and the homeowners and the unit owners, and the other one is the is the you know water district's responsibility. So there's a lot of moving parts and a lot of different issues, um, and unfortunately, you fix one, and the other one ends up having a problem in the meantime. And it seems to be, you know, happening over the course of years. And and the, the PFAS issue is a new one everywhere, right? That, that's yes. correct. That's correct. Yes. That, that is something, the one we're addressing right now is something that most plants are dealing with. That's right. Right. It's not new. It's yes. just they've changed the minimum threshold. Is that right? No, no, I, well, no. It's not new. It's just additional. Right. Well, put it this way: it, it's 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 new from a Department of Health perspective since Q1 of last year, right? I mean, they they exactly they, they passed the, the MCO levels were changed in August of 2020, and they they required all public water systems to test for PFAS for the first time, uh, Q1 of 2021, right. and every quarter after that. And, and Erica, I haven't forgotten about the residents' desire to have an independent engineering study. So thanks, Andrea. It all costs money and we got to figure it out. It's a big puzzle. Yes. Yeah, and we had been examining alternative sources of water. I know that's a pipe dream, not to be, uh, not to use a pun for a lot of people, but it's definitely something we had talked about with Tony many times. Yep, yep. Okay, so, but I, but I think we'll, you know, we'll, we'll still uh, uh, be proactive about um, all these things. And, and of course, the, the, the intent is to, uh, to have or continue having good quality water, wastewater treatment, and, and yeah, and, and obviously we're going to strive for that. Thank you. And thanks to Leo. Appreciated. Leo, Tony, Andrea, much appreciated, Joel, for your time. You're very welcome. You're welcome. So, so this is, it's being recorded. We, we will post it. We post it to, we can post it to YouTube, right? Yeah, we can post it to YouTube. So if anyone wants to view it, um, and what I can do is I can, once we post it, I can do the, uh, the Oprah Gmail blast and I'll have Mike Lombardo also uh, blast to his email list. Put a link and we'll put, yeah, we'll, we'll advertise the link. Very helpful. Thanks a lot. This is, this right, is productive. Thank you, everybody. Thanks. Okay, thank very you. good. Have a good night. Bye-bye. Stop recording. Let me stop recording.